Okay, Mike Coop, you're standing in front of what everybody else used to look at as an old, nasty, torn down nursing home. But you stood here 15 years ago and saw a place of hope. Everybody else saw a rundown, abandoned nursing home. You saw a place of hope. Can you go back there in your mind's eye? Like the first time you came here, like what was going through your mind at this place? I saw opportunity. And it was an opportunity to take a dream that my wife and I had and my partner, Dr. John Brown, and help people who have alcohol and drug problems, people who are homeless, people that don't have any resources, no insurance, no cash, no way to get into a high priced treatment center and give them what they need. And it was a possibility to me that if we could get this place, this would just be the perfect thing. Well, this whole time I was uh, I was self-destructing slowly and it started towards the end there. It started to get worse and worse. I ended up in Florida for a little while and then went back home to Michigan for a few months. I actually went to rehab up there for the first time. It was, it was actually, I, I should say, more like years, about three years. Um, after I got put out of my uncle's house, I didn't really have any place to go, um, and I ended up on the street. I had some money from working, um, but I, I drank it all up and used it all up in, in drugs and motel rooms, and I ended up homeless. Um, Mike, uh, well, he took me in. So when you see a guy like uh, uh, Richie, right, who's teaching Yeah. Okay. He's homeless for years ago. He's living under a bridge. And here's a college graduate homeless living under a bridge. This isn't just some street smart wino. This is a kid that had all kinds of ability and talent and life went awry for him. He's teaching a class tonight. He works a job now in an office. He's paying it forward. What does that do for you? Oh, it just convinces me that I need to try harder to help more people. I can't do it by myself, and and that's the thing. We need help. How do you think your life would be different if that van didn't pull up that day? Still be on the streets. I'd still be drinking if I hadn't died from a heart attack. The worst thing is getting a call that somebody you tried to help passed away, and that's the reality of what we deal with. If you do not recover from addiction, you die from it. 100%. And so that's a sobering thing. And that's the reality of what happens to people who don't make it. So that breaks your heart. But at the same time, there's something that rises up inside of you, tells you you just got to fight harder. You got to intensify what you're doing. And so we throw ourselves deeper and further into this thing. And we are, we want to help as many people as we possibly can. And when the resources aren't there to be able to help everybody that wants help, that's the second most crushing thing. It's having a waiting list of people that are so desperate they'll do anything to get in here. And we got to tell them to postpone their crisis and wait till we get room for them to come in. Breaks your heart. When you have room, you just they don't have enough rooms. Like this that's space, exactly so right. We have plenty of place to put people we just don't have the resources to the fifty dollars a day it costs to help somebody that's room board and all the therapy that they need as long as they need it so mike we're going to the clinic right now tell me about the clinic well this was the dream of one of our board members dr charles ball he's a medical director at murray regional hospital been a family practice for 30 plus years he wanted to have a a clinic for the indigent, people that didn't have insurance or didn't have Medicaid. And typically these people end up in an emergency room to get general health care that can be provided in a situation like this. Look at what the average cost is in an emergency room. Over a thousand dollars per visit. If people don't have insurance and if people don't have Medicaid, guess who toasts the note? It's me and you and everybody out here, and it's a major effect and impact on all of our health care costs. But Dr. Ball has volunteer nurses and doctors that come in here two nights a week to see anybody in this community for free. Uh, 
This is the only thing I can say when I look in his eyes I see Jesus rising. That's what I see. I want to love who is me. Sorry. But uh, I do anything for that man. No God works to him, but he has to be willing. <laughs>